So my mother ran down the stairs, ran over to the piano while I was playing, got hold of this and smashed it and said, I'm going to smash your fingers with it. I'm fed up. You're driving me mad. You've got St Vitus dance. Well, the thing is, I've always been a busy bee and uh, she had a point. I mean, I was playing the piano at age seven or eight at uh, um, quarter to five in the morning or I was hammering outside or I was making something. I mean, this little diary here is just full of things. I'm making one thing after another. I never stopped. She said, you, you know, relentless, it just goes on. You want to sit down and you be said. Shut up. I feel like committing murder with you. Even, when are you going to be quiet? When you nail down? Well, eventually, my mother took me to the doctor and she said, uh, she said, the thing is, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he never stops. He never stops. It drives me mad. He's always doing something, hammering or building something, or playing the piano. It's awful. Never stops. And, and he ate supper at about half past four in the morning. And the doctor said, Dr. Radley said, well, he said, uh, you've got a very lucky son. You know, an early riser, looking forward to life as soon as he gets on and getting on with life. What a wonderful life he'll have. Well, then we got back on the bus and we didn't say anything after that. But um, he sort of stayed with me, this sort of obsession with doing things. And that's probably one of the reasons why I somehow identify, I feel like, uh, an immigrant. I mean, when people who've come to this country and got to work hard, you know, when I, I like chatting to people who are, uh, whether they're Uber drivers, whether they're plumbers, it doesn't matter what it is, I'm sort of impressed by their verb and their drive to do something and make better, and better themselves. And of course, when I arrived in London, again, uh, that person said to me, why don't you drop out, man? And I said, well, the thing is, I haven't dropped in yet. So anyway, here we go. Well, um, when I left the Slade, uh, graduated, um, I remember walking out the front door, and in those days they used to have a beadle at the front door uh, of the Slade with a top hat. And uh, he would, uh, when you came in in the morning, he'd say, good morning, sir, or good morning, Mr. Grills. It's extraordinary, really. Uh, but when uh, I was going out, I said to him uh, last night, I said, I'm leaving now, Walter. I said, I don't know what's going to become of me. He said, what are you going to do then, sir? I said, well, I've, um, I've got a day a week's teaching at Reading, and I'm... I've got a job driving uh, central heating parts around uh, around to Thanet in, in in a lorry, and he said, "I said I don't know what I'll you know what I'll I'll make out." He said, "Oh, you'll be all right, sir. You'll be fine. You're relentless. You're like that. Uh, you like that record. You know what's that one? You know that by the what's it called? The Arches. You know it, you don't know when it's going to stop. You know you come in here at seven o'clock in the morning, and sometimes you're here till." 10 o'clock at night, when we have to chuck you out. So you'll be fine. Well, what's the song? Oh, I know. Sugar. Sugar, sugar.
Thank you. 